pipes and filters is the next pattern. We want to form a sequence of processing steps using a common interface. So as you can see in the graphic, we have these pipes, which basically are just buffers. They get some data from the client, buffer them in between and communicate it forward to the first filter, which is basically just a process. We get a data request through a, a pipe. The first process does something with this data. It processes it. Think of sorting or filtering the first 20 bytes of each file uh, and reading it. Then it outputs the data in the same way. Again, it uses a pipe for the next process. And now it gets interesting. So basically what we also could do is piping the data back into the first filter. The idea is to use the same communication mechanisms among all those filters in order to, to chain these filters one after another. After filter two has processed the data in some way, this can be repeated over and over again. In the end, either we restore the results somewhere or we have some side effects on each of these filters. It could also happen that filter two, for example, has some side effects which change the state of some other objects or, which is the most common thing is, we just report the results back to the client somehow. But you mentioned that the communication buffer is always the same, right? That is, that is one of the factors here. Actually, it can be different. So what sometimes happens is that the client, so the first buffer is different and the, the return buffer is different, but everything else should use the same pipe and they should agree on the same uh, kind of communication. Most often it's standard in and standard out. It's just a stream of bytes which gets sent between processes. You could decide to give the client a simpler interface, for example, so that he can use it in a more simpler way. But between the filters, you should have always the same interface, a common interface. And most of the time, the client also takes just standard in and standard out. This is one variant to give the client a simpler interface. And also there are difference in if you're buffering the data in the pipes and how big is this buffer. Maybe if the buffer is overflown, maybe some new data which arrives gets just dismissed and is deleted. Or we want to wait for some data. For example, we get the next 10 messages and forward it in a batch. That's all possible. These are all design decisions which you make inside a pipe. So the context of pipes and filters is we have to process some data streams. This is the most common context and use case for this. And the problem is that if we do everything in one application and if we define specific interfaces between maybe parts of our application, then that's very specific to this use case, but we want to be flexible at runtime. We want to compose this at runtime into multiple stages, processing stages. Forces are that we want to maybe exchange single processing filters. We want to reorder the steps maybe. Uh, we want to reuse the processing filter. For example, think of an image filter which does some segmentation and for example, filters my background out of the video. Maybe I want to use this not just for this video, maybe I want it in, to use it in Skype also, or in Discord or on Twitch and so on. I want to reuse existing components. There may be different sources of data. For example, data can come from a file, from a sensor, from network and so on, but I don't care. I just want to process a, a data stream. That's important. Multiprocessing shall be enabled. This is interesting because in the previous slide, we have this chain of pipes and filters, which do their work one after another. The next filter has to wait until the data arrives and then he can do his work. But if you have a continuous stream of data, then all filters could work at the same time. 
They don't have to wait until, for example, if filter N already is doing work, filter one can do work in parallel. And when filter one is finished, he can just send his data forward. And whenever this data arrives at filter N, he just continues to work. All the filters, all these processes can do the work in parallel and potentially could do it on different nodes and in different computers. The solution here is that we divide our system into a sequence of processing steps. And these processing steps should be independent from each other. Of course, they have to wait until the previous task is finished, until data arrives in this component, but they don't have to wait for other things. Just when the data is finished, the next task can grab the data and continue working. We have to define a data format which should be passed along this pipe. For example, if we use standard in and standard out, it's quite defined, but not exactly. Do we use Indian encoding or not? Do we use Indian, what it's called? Upper Indian, lower Indian? No. Little, yeah, little okay. Indian. Little, little. <laughs> do, do we use uh, little Indian encoding or big Indian? Do, do we use um, Unicode encoding or do we just use ASCII encoding and so on? So we have to clarify this before we can communicate. Then we should define if a pipe connection should push or pull the information. Do we have ask all the time? Give me the next piece of data, piece of cake, I just wanted to say, but piece of data. Or do I wait until the previous pipe calls me, here is some new data, please process it. Push or pull is a design decision. And also error handling is a design decision. We not only have standard in, standard out, but we also have standard error. And this is a separate pipeline, which runs in parallel to the processing pipelines. Also error handling should be handled somehow. In the end, we have to set up this processing pipeline. Someone must be responsible to chain all these pipelines, pipes and filter together. Most of the time it's the operating system. But of course, we if you think of graphic programs or 3D programs, they have this processing pipeline also inside of an application, not using standard in, standard out. Consequences, intermediate files are possible. So I can break a pipe and just store it in, inside a file and reuse this file later on. I can break up the whole processing. I can exchange filters during runtime. I'm very flexible here. I can recombine all the filters. Also for parallel processing, this can be very efficient if I can split up the filters into separate processes. Sharing information is expensive. If some filters need to have some common database, some shared infos, I have to send it over the pipeline all the time. Or I have to connect two processes together, which I don't want, because then they are not independent anymore. Data information overhead is an issue here. I always have to serialize my objects and deserialize it on the other side. This is costly. For example, think of XML files, which are transferred over the stream and which always have to be completely interpreted and then serialized again at the outgoing channel. And error handling is difficult here. Making a separate pipeline for an error channel only. Uh, in addition to this normal processing pipeline, maybe I also put up some error handling pipeline, which goes back to the user again. And if he wants to process the errors, he can do, or otherwise the errors get dismissed. With the previous depiction, it's also good that you highlight here with the forces and with the solutions that it is also capable for multiprocessing or applicable for multiprocessing and that also the ordering of the filters. I think this is maybe not directly clear from this depiction, but this is highlighted on the other slides. They are highlighted and very important to know. Mm -hmm. 
thinking of pipes and filters, think of a whiskey distillery. We have multiple processing steps, the harvest of the barley, then germination, then baking the barley, milling barley, mashing it, fermentation, and so on. Or similar to it, the beer brewing process. We also have these processing steps, and then the, the results get pumped into the next chamber. There you brew or boil the mashes in the mesh tun, and this gets pumped into the next chamber and so on. Now this is pipes and filters. And 